Hey guys, welcome back to DRESD on Clownfish TV. This is Neon, aka Tom Pratt, your host. And uh, joining me today is Mr. Mike Phelan, a contributor to clownfishtv.com. Say hello, Mike. Hi, Mike. Yep. There you go. There you go. Uh, and we have a very special guest this episode, Mr. Egan Tillman, a YouTube animator who uh, kind of uh, ran afoul of Twitter or X or whatever it's called now, uh, accidentally, with his fan film, an amazing fan film he did of uh, Scooby-Doo and Five Nights at Freddy's, uh, done in a Rankin-Bass style on Blender. At 23 years old, I can't even fathom uh, being able to do that. But uh, he did, and he's here to talk to us about animation and perhaps this experience, what he's learned from it, and uh, maybe give uh, all of you some some tips on animating. So say hello to everyone, Egan. Hey, thank you for having me on. So uh, yeah, let's, let's talk about uh, animation first. You obviously like to animate. So when did you fall in love with animation? When did you decide you wanted to be an animator? Um... Uh, that's a tough question. I, I love, I've loved animation my whole life, specifically stop motion, because I've always been very, I've always been very artsy and crafty and like hands on. And so I don't know, there was just always something magical about like, seeing an animated movie and seeing like real fabric textures and real light. And like, I don't know, it would just, I, I can't explain it. It's just like that feeling of movie magic that Especially that feeling of like childhood movie magic that I feel like so hard to get back. That's what it all is to me. And so I've always appreciated it. One of my, like, I love, I'm a massive fan of Tim Burton. As you, like, I've got Batman and Beetlejuice behind me. Yeah, I see that. But um, his stop motion stuff always inspired me. Like, it was just so beautiful and such an art, and I loved it. But believe it or not, I did not start animating, like, Basically, everything on my YouTube is everything I've ever animated. I last I wrote a uh, I wrote a Five Nights at Freddy's short film, and originally it was just kind of for fun. But then halfway through the process, I started to really develop kind of an original idea that I actually really like, and it, I think it works really well. And because I want to be a director, I'm like, even if this is a fan film. Like, I would love to make this somehow just to show, like, I wrote this and directed this completely on my own. And um, my what inspired me to learn animation was Worthy Kids. He does okay. similar stuff with the stop yeah. motion. And I like stop motion, and I want to make movies. And when I saw his stuff and then saw in the credits it was made in Blender, I've worked in Blender since I was about 15. I never animated. I just made models for, like, Five Nights at Freddy's. But, um... When I saw he did it in Blender, I was like, okay, this is this is my shot. This is how I do it. I I learned how to do this in Blender, and then I make my movie on my own. And that was last September, when, and that was the Beetlejuice video on my page. And so, yeah, that was last September, and I've spent the last year, like, there were some times where I just fell off and wasn't practicing at all, but um, I've spent the last year kind of practicing, and where the spring trapped video came from it was literally just a piece from my portfolio and just a like piece to practice on like i just wanted to do something fun and practice but i also didn't want to do something i don't know i like writing and i like movies enough to where if i'm going to practice i wanted to do something that had like a narrative because i just thought it would be more fun and so yeah that that came about just me wanting to like practice animation and so yeah that's <laughs> I've been doing this about a year and I'm loving it. And it's crazy that my video is like blowing up like it is because I wasn't expecting this. Yeah. So Mike actually uh, put you on my radar. He did, he did the uh, article about your situation over the weekend. And um, I don't know if Mike knows, but I'm like a massive Rankin Bass nerd. Like I'm a huge, like my, my goal is to actually own some of the Animagic puppets and uh, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna own Pinocchio someday. That is my goal. Oh, that would be if awesome. Stole, if he still Pinocchio's Christmas is actually my favorite, which is weird. Like that's nobody's favorite, but I I like the disco number. What can I say? Um, but uh, yeah, so I mean, it was like all the it was like oh my god. So we got a guy who's animating his own stuff on YouTube, and it, it, it's amazing. And he's doing it himself, which shows you know, where technology is right now that you can do this yourself. Like you don't need the gatekeepers like you did 
even a few years ago, but just that you've got everything right. Like, obviously you love stop motion animation because it is really hard to get that, that rank and bass look correct. Like I've seen even official sequels. And I think I talked about this um, before, like cup of coffee studios did a sequel to miser brothers and it just did not look right. Like it didn't have that, that look, but you obviously have studied this stuff and you got the faces, the mouths, like the pacing, the, everything right and i was like and then, then i found out you're 23 years old and i was like what no no way no way and this is um can we show a couple clips here are you gonna copyright strike us oh yeah Maybe? absolutely not <laughs> all right so let's um let's pull up this is your this was your first attempt right uh yeah that was my first ever like animation attempt it was just like a a quick clip of the like showtime thing from beetlejuice and I don't know. I'm just a fan of Tim Burton. So it was a fun first thing to do. <laughs> yeah. And th this was done in Blender. So these, these are not actual puppets. It's CG. Yeah. All of these are done completely in Blender. What's the rendering time for a Blender video like that? Even a short one. Um, Beetlejuice took longer to render. Cause I was still, I was very new. Like I've done Blender since I was about 15, but I hadn't really played around in the cycles rendering engine, which is that one takes a long time. Mm -hmm. I had messed around more in the classic blender render, which they don't even have anymore, but I did mostly like five nights at Freddy's fan art and the five nights at Freddy's style does not really use a lot of ray tracing. It, it is like very dark and is very stylized. And so I was not familiar with ray tracing. So that one took that, what, 10, five second clip took, overnight to render and when like i went to bed and woke up the next morning and it was still rendering oh my god but the scooby-doo animation when i first started the render times were insane but as i went on i learned a few tricks one the sample like grain the like low sample grain kind of goes away under a vhs filter so mm -hmm. i got i could get away with that and then two in a lot of the shots especially the opening scene with all of the leaves and stuff that's a lot of stuff going on. So that takes a lot to render behind them. So I would render one frame of the background and then I would just put it on a backdrop behind them. So instead of rendering all those leaves and trees, it would just render like a flat image, like out of focus behind them. And that cut the render time in like half. And if, um, if I hadn't done that, I would probably still be rendering stuff right now. So you can set certain things to be static and not have to worry about them at all. Uh, yeah. Like, Especially if their feet aren't touching the ground and I don't mm -hmm. know if their feet are on the ground. That's different because I want the shadows to interact because a lot of what sells the stop motion effect is the kind of crude lighting where it's not <laughs> this, it's not this super dynamic, like digital looking lighting. It's just like three lights and they're very harsh and you can see all the shadows. And so mm -hmm. when they're walking and you could see their feet, I would just render the whole scene. But if it was ever a close-up, I would just put a backdrop because that would that would render so much faster. Uh, the way the way that you caught like Scooby's individual hairs, like a like an Animagic model, you can the, the light just makes it look so coarse and so terrible, but it's so accurate. It's it's Thank amazing. You. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. that's actually another plus of the low samples. I did his hair is really sparkly, and because the samples are so low, it leaves these like bright like artifact pixels that add mm -hmm. extra sparkle to it and make it look extra coarse it reminds me of like muppet fleece like all the fleece yes. they use like kermit the frog and stuff i i thought for sure when i first watched it i thought i thought it was puppets i thought you used puppets <laughs> like i i was seriously like I mean, there's, there's no way this was done in in cgi there's no way and everybody's like oh yeah he did this i'm like how long did he spend building all of the oh my god and then it was like oh no he didn't blender and i'm like no he didn't bullshit <laughs> bullshit and it, but still, it's, it's it's you have to it's sculpt amazing. everything in Blender. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how long did it take you to put this together? Total, like, would you say? Uh, it took me three months. That's I've it. Been, I've been, yeah. I mean, I've been working very hard on it. I've worked like my girlfriend was talking about it the other day. Like, I've basically went MIA for almost three months, just like doing this, which. That's kind of how I work. I like what I do so much that when I get passionate about a project, I just kind of disappear. It's the but, flow, um, man. It's the flow. But yeah, it took it took three months. Um, it took a it took probably three or four weeks to get everything modeled, 
and like sculpted and textured. And then all of the rest of the time was just animation and rendering and then editing, sound editing, um, compositing, like VHS effects, stuff like that. But yeah, it's, it's, this started, my original idea was just the unmasking gag. Like I was just going to do the end clip. But um, I started watching, I watched a ton of the classic Scooby show for inspiration. And literally when the first episode started, like when I saw the first title card of the night in the box, it literally was like, okay, I just have to do a full episode. I like, I love this show too much. Yeah. And the like, I don't know, there's something so nostalgic and magical, not only about the visuals themselves, but about the structure and pacing of an old cartoon episode, the title card, the way the music is that I just decided to do like, I didn't do a full episode. It's kind of a condensed full episode, but I just mm -hmm. wanted to do a full one because I just wanted it to be kind of like a love letter to like classic cartoons and cl like a full episode of classic cartoons. Yeah, it, it's incredible. And you did that. That's kind of what blew my mind. Cause you know, being a, a huge fan of classic cartoons and Rankin Bass and Hanna-Barbera and the fact that on so many levels, you got everything right. So you obviously did your homework. Right. I mean, you obviously watched a lot of classic animation and you're right. There is like you can tell Hanna-Barbera cartoons from a certain era. They have a certain pacing. They have a certain look. Uh, Rankin Bass, same thing. So story structure, all of that stuff. The music, it all has a certain look to it because you had a lot of the same people working on you know each production. Mm -hmm. But just that it at 23 years old, you were able to pull this off on your own using Blender just completely blows my mind. I mean, it just Thank absolutely. I mean, this is in my opinion, better than a lot of stuff we would see on like Adult Swim or, you know, it's, it's, it's really, really good. So what, what, what's your setup? Are you a uh, desktop? Obviously. Uh, I have a MacBook and a Bluetooth mouse <laughs> and that's, and I have a, my friend, I'm like working on, I'm helping him out with a few like films of his cause he's, we're both like just really like small time wannabe filmmakers and, um, my friend, I'm helping him out with a movie, and he, as a gift, got me a Cintiq. And so that's been super helpful for, like, texturing and stuff. But, yeah, most most of what I do is just on my laptop and uh, with my mouse because I don't really have I, – I don't have a desktop or anything. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, so I, I just want to stop right here because I, I hear a lot of complaints from young creatives who are, like – I can't do this. I can't do that. I can't make a comic. I can't start a YouTube channel. I can't uh, do whatever because I don't have the right equipment. I don't have what I need to get started. And you're telling me that you pulled this off with a laptop and a mouse on Blender. Yeah, my I guess my philosophy with that is that every project takes every project takes X amount of money to be good. But if you if you don't have the like physical money to put into, and I don't want to be reductive and say, if you don't have anything, you can still right, do right. this work hard. That's not true. Like it does help to have access to things. Oh but yeah, yeah. If you really want to just do it and you don't have much, all of the, all of the money that you're lacking in equipment, put that in and work and people will be able to see it. Like people will tell that you put in the work, even if like, for example, another reason that, I did like kind of crude stop motion VHS is because I know that's what I'm capable of with my current abilities. If I tried to do like a perfectly like smooth animated dynamic lighting, crazy Pixar rendered, I wouldn't be able to do that. And yeah, it wouldn't. Yeah. So it's, it's like one, yes, I agree. It can be hard to work without stuff, but two, just like find your strengths and just hammer your strengths in and work really hard at those. And people will notice those instead of trying to, instead of trying to do stuff that you're not capable of and people just coming to critique you, find what you're good at and just like go all the way with it. And people will notice, like people will be able to see. Yeah, uh, definitely. People, people have noticed. Did you have any, uh, Egan, do you have any formal training? Um, no, I've, I've never, like, I haven't been to college. I, I grew up my whole life. I've just been like creative. I did. I've worked in film a little bit. I helped clean molds in like a special effects shop for um, a couple of years and, uh, or actually a couple of years just for one year. And I, that was a pretty cool experience. Um, I got to work on that horror movie smile 
And then um, oh, Mike would know that. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, I worked on the most recent Predator sequel, which I think they like forgot to credit us for that. So that was I think they added it in later. But I remember watching it for the first time and like I just wasn't in the credits. And that was kind of a bummer. Was that, but, was that Prey? Yes. Right. That was actually pretty good. Prey was actually pretty good. I was surprised. I didn't expect it to be any good. And I actually like. Yeah, I, I thought it was great. Yeah, I got that job because um, when I was 17, I used I have seven siblings. I'm the oldest of eight. And I used to dress my siblings up in like homemade Halloween costumes. And I would post them online. And in 2017, the new It movie came out. And so I just did it with my brother and posted it. And it went like kind of nuts and nuts enough for the makeup artists who are makeup like designers who did the movie to see it. And um, I like, we became friends. I visited the studio. And then after like, after probably three or four years um, at when work started coming back in the movie industry after COVID, they just needed some people like to help and like give a hand. And they asked me if I wanted a job. And so I like moved out here on my own and like, I've been figuring it out since then. Jeez. That's the way, that's the way you have to do it. I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I tried it and I failed at it. So at least you're doing it right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it was really hard at first. Like it is very difficult to live in Los Angeles. Oh, and yeah. um, <laughs> like when I first moved here, I, so since I've moved here, I've lived here for two years, I've lost four cars two separate mm -hmm. car accidents that were none of them were my fault. <laughs> oh my god. And so one of which I one of which I didn't get any insurance money for. So then I was basically out of car and out and I had to scramble and figure that out. But like yeah, living in LA isn't hard. I mean, living in LA isn't easy. It but I've I've been able to kind of settle in and make it work and I really enjoy mm -hmm. being out here. And uh and I you, just you kind of have to. You don't have yeah. any any other choice. It's where you have to be. Yeah. And so, yeah, I just, I don't, I don't work at the FX studio anymore. Um, because like there was a time when they didn't have any movies going and just because there's no movies doesn't mean that my rent stops. And so um, yeah. I started doing just like graphic design for like my church and stuff. And so I like, I do that now and which I kind of prefer it because if you want to work, which I was very thankful and loved that job. But if you want to work in film, it's kind of like a like 24 hour job and it can be a lot. And then it can also, I don't know, just to do my own stuff. I kind of like where I'm at right now because my job is a little more like relaxed and flexible so I can have the free time and have the energy at the end of the day to really work hard on my own stuff. And so I'm really, I'm enjoying where I'm at right now. That's cool. So have you, have you shopped any of your, your, uh, projects around? I mean, have you approached any animation studios on your own or? Uh, yeah, I have no idea how to do that. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. I, you need a, you need an agent. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing. That's, that's what makes, and I, I don't, I, I don't necessarily want to talk about it a ton, but that's what makes mm -hmm. the controversy so funny to me is everybody keeps holding me to the standard of like someone who knows what they're doing and yeah. I would love to know what I'm doing and I'm grateful that now I do because people help me out. But it was kind of disheartening to say, hey, I'm brand new to this. I did this. And then everyone, instead of just saying, oh, that's awesome. Maybe do this next time. It just turned into like a witch hunt like that. Was, yeah. like, it, was, it was condescending yeah. the the yeah. the attitude that was coming at you, which I discovered like I watched your short Saturday morning and then I saw the controversy on Sunday and I was following and I was like, why is what happened to just being supportive of creatives? Why is it suddenly this moral high ground that you're going to stand on? Yeah. And, but it's, I think it's all basically due to the strike, but yeah, 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 no, I agree. No one, no one just wanted to give you a hand. It was all like, let's take our, let's take our pound of flesh from this creative. Yeah. Well, like, and, and be happy video, about it. If you watch the video, I credited the AI at the end with the people that I thought it was. And like, I know, I know people probably don't, necessarily care but it's mm -hmm. like i from my perspective it was one of those like it was it was the same as like splicing a voice together for like a meme and so i thought since this is non-profit and i can't pay 
the, like my payment is giving them credit because I'm not a corporation. I'm not making profit, but I do deserve to give them credit because I am using their stuff. Yeah. That was my thought process. I was wrong, but like, I get that now, but I just think the response to it was a little, a little much because it would have been nice for people to just tell me it was, tell me it was like not the right way to go and to just do it differently. It, I think one of the reasons why uh, why Delisle is is upset is because she's credited as Greg instead yeah. of Gray. Oh, I, I didn't even notice that. that. Oh, I God. noticed that after she responded, and at first, like now that it's simmered down, it's like, oh, whatever. Oh um, my God! At first, I was like, oh gosh, this is just going to get worse. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, the AI um, and people point out uh, it's it's not Gray Delisle. It's actually the one of the original Daphne voice actors. Yeah, that's that's another thing I didn't want to like mention. I, I'm also not that, I didn't really know about AI. The only reason I was even able to do that is because I have like a friend who's a little more familiar with it. Yeah. And yeah. so the, like, I only credited Greg or Gray because, um, because I thought some of the stuff sounded a little similar to Mystery Incorporated. And so yeah. I was like, I'll just do that because I wanted to do, like, I was trying to do the right thing. Not saying that I didn't have any mistakes in, in it at all, but I like I was trying to like do right by them. And so it was just it was a little disheartening, but it's fine. Like it's all good. Yeah. Yeah. Actors and my video hit a million views. And yeah, it's just it's it's been it's been fine. That's that's crazy. So yeah, I mean, this tends to happen a lot, right? Uh, a lot of uh, can cancellation attempts they they tend to have the opposite effect. It's called Streisand effect, and it happens very often. Uh, I don't know why people still come come at people they want to cancel because usually it winds up going the opposite direction. And in your case, uh, this really puts you on the radar with the animation community. And uh, you know, I, I think I think the right people are going to see your work now. Whereas maybe they wouldn't have before, so uh, congratulations, uh, you know, to those of you who were criticizing uh, this 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 work. You you probably got this guy a job at some point, but no, I mean, I think a couple of years ago, I think Mike's right. I think it's the the climate right now because there's such a discussion around uh, AI and you know the strikes are going on. And ten years ago, I don't think it would have been that big of a deal. Yeah. You know, I, I don't think it would have been, but right now there are people they're legitimately afraid, and I think they have a right to be afraid of, yeah, of losing absolutely. their jobs. You know, I mean, as well, a I mean, like yeah. visual, as a guy who's grown up being a visual artist, and as someone who wants to write movies, like I completely understand. I completely understand the concerns with AI. I guess my perspective, because a lot of people have said like, if you hate AI so much, why did you use it? My perspective was not, oh, I hate AI, but I'm going to be a hypocrite and use it. It was. Yeah. I kind of ha I hate that AI can replace artists and my short wasn't especially with my understanding of the like voice acting community I wasn't replacing any jobs because I didn't have any jobs to give like mm -hmm. I was I was working completely alone and plus this wasn't a voice acting demo it was an animation demo now yeah. not to say I like I still I would love to use voices and I'm use I'm working on a new video right now that I'm I've got a whole, like full voice cast for, and it's really exciting. But um, it wasn't. I wasn't trying to make a perfect episode. I was trying to just show my chops, and so I wasn't really thinking about. Okay, these are places for people to show their chops as well. I was just thinking like I just want to get my video out because it's it, it literally was just to be a portfolio piece of this is what yeah. I can do, and so that's why I didn't think it was. I didn't think it was the same as the issue of AI legitimately replacing, replacing actors, artists, writers, and stuff like that. I thought it was a different mm -hmm. thing. But now, like, I see how it could be distasteful. If I could go back, I would have just used different voices. But uh, you can't go back. And so I'm working on redubbing the video right now as well. And I'm going to re-upload. I'm going to upload it again with, like, new voices. Just because, I don't know, I just feel like it would be, like, the right thing to do. And so, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that, that's what got me too. like, uh, when my wife and I talked about this, you know, she brought up a uh, teachable, she's actually an art teacher and she brought up uh, teachable moments. So she was like, you know, why didn't these voice actors pull this guy aside and say, Hey, you know what? That's, that's a really fantastic short, but we're going to show you why real voice actors are better because the inflection and the, all that, the emotion is just not there. It's kind of flat, you know, with AI. And they could have done that and been like, Hey, you know, uh, either, 
you know, why don't you consider hiring some voice actors, finding some volunteers, or maybe we'll donate. I probably can't because of, you know, contracts and all that junk. But but still, I mean, there, there were other ways, personally, I feel, to handle it rather than put you on blast and effectively threaten to blacklist you, which completely floored me. I mean, I was... I was like, I, I don't think I've ever seen this kind of, I mean, look, animation Twitter can be pretty intense sometimes, but I've never seen that kind of like just massive overreaction to such a minor, you know, innocuous mistake, you know, it was, it was insane. Well, is it, is it really a mistake? Because if you're making something that's fan made, uh, you're not doing this for commercial. Yeah, true, true. What's, yeah. What's the, how is this any different than when I was in art school and if I were to make a video and I splice some voices together and turn that in as my project and what's the difference yeah and my my another th thought i had was like i use all of the music isn't mine either and like people aren't upset about that which i don't think they should be because it's literally like they it's set up in a way where they it's a fan project like they've got their money for the music and it's fine but just the sentiment of the argument sometimes like it just feels a little flat to me because the, you're critiquing one thing in a really harsh way when there's all these other things that you're okay with that are similar yeah. Yeah. and it's not i don't even say that to discredit the argument my thing is like if you're if you have a critique of it just be honest about the critique and don't try to bring out these like what about ism type things to like <laughs> add to it because especially for like people like that's another thing i'm fine it worked for me but like there might have been other people that it might not have turned out so well for, and that was their first in like that that was their first introduction to you guys is like cruelty. Like just I don't think they think about the fact that like you're gonna scare new people off from doing it, which yes. will mean like in the future, if you scare all the new people off by being cruel, you're not gonna have jobs in the future anyway, because all the people that should be making your stuff aren't making your stuff anymore. And the only people yep. that are making it are the big industry guys who are just going to use AI because that's all they care about. So it's like, you don't want to scare off the guys that actually care about art because that's, that was another thing that frustrated me. It felt like people completely overlooked the extreme amount of work that was put into the animation because I was like lazy with the voices, which is once again, it wasn't supposed to be about the voices. It was supposed to be a very visual portfolio piece. So, but yeah, like I just, if you guys scare off all the newbies, you're going to run out of people that care about the art and you're going to be stuck with the people that just use AI. Yeah. And well, I mean, you're, you're going to find uh, if you get into that scene that sometimes it's intentional. I don't know what the motivation was. I can't speak to what the motivation was, but, but um, it's, it's a pretty lockdown scene, you know, uh, the LA animation scene. And uh, unfortunately it, and I know some people that have been in and out of it and they've told me stories and I'm not going to repeat, but you know, the, the great thing about YouTube is that you can bypass a lot of it. I mean, there, there are people making very, very good livings just doing YouTube. There are people getting their shows picked up just by getting big in animation on YouTube. I mean, the odd ones out had a, a Netflix show picked up. Uh, you know, we have Vivzy pop, you know, has been hotel. So, I mean, YouTube opens up a whole nother avenue for creators to get their work out there in ways that were completely unthinkable 10 or 15 years ago, mm -hmm. you know, for sure. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry too much, too much about it. The right people see your stuff. You'll probably get a phone call or an email about it, you know, which, yeah. which, which beats having to knock on doors. Basically they're going to look at the numbers and be like, wow, a lot of people watch this and this is pretty good stuff. And let's give this guy a call. You know, yeah, that's, that's the dream. <laughs> and talent, talent is going to outlive the temporary Twitter drama. I mean, yeah. It died down within a couple of days, and obviously, you're obviously it's it's given you a lot of success. It went from five hundred thousand views to over a million in two days, I think. Yeah, that's crazy. And everything that's on Twitter is just going to go away. That's something that uh, I've always I've always seen people struggle with in in Hollywood is they get so caught up on uh, temporary people being temporarily angry at something and suddenly they change their whole life around to appease that crowd mm -hmm. but the drama goes away in, yeah. a, in a few days everyone forgets about it now if we can only get studios and corporations to understand they don't they don't need to bend over because of twitter drama i think the industry as a whole would be better off yeah 
I, I think that I think the change is coming. I think I think they're starting to realize that a lot of the online drama isn't isn't real. I mean, you can have two or three salty people make it seem like the entire world is angry at you. And then they get their friends, they rope their friends in, they create sock puppet accounts, they go out of message boards, you know, whatever. But it's not actually real. It's like, that's not how the general public feels. Actually, you show this to a, a normie and they're gonna be like, wow, that is really freaking cool. You know, yeah, that you is can see that in the comments. A lot of people are just like, wow, this is amazing. And then you get those few that were like, let me let me give you a piece of my mind. Let me tell you about what you did wrong and how you morally offended me. Yeah, but, one of yeah. one of the best compliments I've received, because like when I made it, I thought I thought I would get like a couple thousand views, maybe like I thought maybe it might be a little popular. I didn't think it would be like this. But um, and I thought people would just like like it. Like I thought they would just appreciate yeah. it. Oh, that was nice. But some of the comments are of people saying that like I did an amazing job at capturing the essence of like original Scooby Doo, or like the comments commending me for not making it like super gory and choosing to go like the wholesome route. Those mm -hmm. were really nice to see because those are all things I worked really hard to do intentionally. And so it felt really nice, not only for people to like, like what I did, but actually kind of recognize kind of the intent behind it. Cause I didn't think, I didn't think people would have that response. And so that's been really nice to see is like all these like classic Scooby-Doo fans really loving it because it reminds them of like Scooby-Doo because that's like the reason I chose to do Scooby-Doo anyways is because I love it and wanted to like write a love letter to it essentially. So I'm glad like those compliments were very nice to see. Yeah, definitely. I, I think that's that. That's just it. I think um, you know you're going to find that the support and the one thing that really uh, you know stuck out with me during this whole thing online was that we had like everybody seemingly coming out in support of you and like like animation Twitter is pretty pretty fractured and people are all over the place with you know AI and and all of that. But like so many people put aside their differences regardless of how they felt about ai to come out to support you because it is a, a phenomenal piece of work and the uh the quote unquote infraction was was minor and very easy to understand you know why it happened how it happened and uh you apologize for it and you're like okay fine next time i won't use ai i mean that that should be that should be it right like nobody yeah. nobody died no jobs were actually taken it was a fan film it's it's not that big of a deal but uh yeah, I, I, I mean, I think I think you're going to find that most people are going to, you know, uh, welcome your work with open arms because you really do have an amazing amount of talent. For yeah, sure. Thank you. Yeah, I'm very grateful for I'm grateful for the amount of people that were either indifferent or even opposed in the beginning and then heard me out and actually came to like help me out and like support me. I'm very grateful to those people. I have like a discord server now with all of these voice actors that wanted to help. And so That's they're, awesome. yeah, they're helping me with, and I've got some really like, they're really talented. And so, um, I'm doing my next, uh, my next animation. It's not going to be this long because I'm not spending another three months on it right now, <laughs> but, um, I'm, my next animation, I'm going to do like a Ninja Turtles homage and I've got voices for all four turtles. One guy even sounds very similar to Rob Paulson. And so, oh, like I, when I heard that, I was like, "Oh, that's awesome!" Because I love the original like Raphael voice, and so they're very talented guys, and um, and uh, and girls as well. Because I'm gonna put April in it too. I, I just haven't cast her yet. But like, yeah, people showed up and they showed up to help me, and I like couldn't be more grateful. That's Are you awesome. going to be trying to do that in the uh, the Will Vinton style of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle claymation, or are you going to do something else? Uh, I'll probably do it similar to what I've been doing. I want to I wanna attempt kind of Will Vinton style, but Will Vinton style might be a little more difficult because it's it's very much less like posing, and he does a lot of mm -hmm. like physically moving the clay, mm -hmm. which can yeah. be hard to replicate digitally. But um, I love Will Vinton. What, literally one of my favorite movies ever is uh, Return to Oz, and the work he did in that movie on on all of the stone – like I don't know gnomes, how a yeah. human, I don't know how a human is physically capable of that animation. Like I really don't know because it looks so fluid and so rigid at the same time, and I don't know how he did it. But it's amazing. Mm -hmm. We need we need more people working in the industry that have a passion for what has come before. 
you know it's so sad to see like i look at a lot of and i'm not trying to throw shade at anybody but I look a lot of the showrunners on a lot of the, the the newer shows and they don't seem to have any appreciation for you know the history of animation and the amazing animators and talents the voice actors that came before and at 23 years old you you do which you know i appreciate as an old head that uh you actually know who will vinton is <laughs> <laughs> yes i love i love will vinton i have I was when I was a kid. I had a VHS tape that I would watch nonstop on repeat, and it was—I don't know if it was just a regular TV special. It was, yeah, it was just a, a horror, TV special. It was not a one? holiday no. special. It was just a regular TV special of the California Raisins. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. They, I remember that. I remember it was, that. It was yeah. like Meet the Raisins, and it was like a yeah, fake yeah. documentary yep. about how they got yeah. their start. <laughs> I, I watched that like religiously as a child. I remember the first sleepover I went to with like a buddy from school, I brought that VHS tape and I made him watch it. And he was like, that was weird. And I was like, I, I don't know. I like it. <laughs> I thought it was, I, I think it's amazing. But yeah, I love, I love Will Vinton and just stop motion in general is one of my favorite things. That That's cool. Um, yeah. So what, I mean, what are your like, what are you going to do now? I guess that's what I'm at. Like you've got all this attention. You got over a million views on your fourth video, your fourth video on YouTube. Uh, what's next? What are you going to do next? Um, so I'm working on just like a short Ninja Turtles clip just for fun and practice. And then next I'll probably do, unless this works out like in, unless this works out in a way where I somehow get the opportunity to actually like take on a, actual animation job if i'm still doing youtube for a while um i'm probably gonna just tackle my short film because i've been writing it i've been writing it for about two years and i've really i don't know i've put a lot of work into it and, and it it has i don't know i just i put so much love into the script for other genres of movies and other franchises and other things that have influenced me and I feel like it could be really cool. And I feel like, I also feel like people will discredit it really easily because it's a FNAF fan film, but I don't think they know like what it is because it's not, honestly, the only thing, it's only FNAF in name. It's a completely original story. And it's honestly supposed to be, feel more like a fantasy stop motion movie than a horror movie or like an analog horror thing. And so I just don't, I, I would probably do that next because I feel like, people would enjoy it. Yeah, I, I saw your uh, Pee Wee Herman um, send-off eulogy, and it's very sad. You you obviously were a fan of Pee Wee Herman. Uh, well. My favorite movie, actually, it might be my second. My favorite movie is Edward Scissorhands, but my second favorite movie is Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Not only I because... Live, I, live in the, I live in the Edward Scissorhands neighborhood. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, you do. You that's do. Yeah. so cool. I, that's literally my favorite movie of all time. I've got like the theater poster right above me, right there. Yeah. <laughs> but um, but yeah, I love Pee Wee's Big Adventure not only because the movie is so charming, but the story behind how it was made. Like it really was. This dude just made the character, and it and they made a movie, and it was amazing. And that's <laughs> I, I really can get behind that because that like I respect that a lot. Yeah, I remember going to see uh, my grandparents. I've fond memories of this movie my grandparents took me to go see it and they thought it was the weirdest thing they'd ever seen uh, <laughs> until transformers the movie where they killed everybody but no they took me to go see it and i, I still remember every, every, we went out to eat afterwards i got a hordak action figure from he-man and uh, they <laughs> loved it and then when every time it would come on hbo my grandparents they'd be like oh is the part with large marge is that on yet because we love large marge. i was like man this thing was weird but they loved it but uh yeah <laughs> he was uh he was definitely one of a kind and um uh, he's definitely going to be missed for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right. So where, uh, I guess, obviously YouTube, people can find you on, on YouTube. Um, do you have any advice for any other young animators or anybody that wants to get into creating stuff? Um, I, my advice is to just do it. Like I think, and this is a good thing, but I think social media has created a culture of like getting noticed and getting your shot which is good. Like, I think that's incredible. And I think it's a very unique thing because back in the day, like it, I guess you, you just didn't have the opportunity to like get your shot mm. from social media. It was a lot harder to get noticed. And so while that's good, 
don't let that stop you from just doing it. Like don't, don't, don't sit and wait for someone. Cause that's what I did for like forever. I was just constantly trying to figure out a way to get a job here, get noticed there and see if I could maybe work here. And I think the best advice is like strive for that, but don't, don't slack off on your work to strive for that. Just like full steam ahead and work on something. And it literally might help your goal there. Like it might help you that if you work and like do something on your own and post it and people love it, it literally could just end up helping you get noticed. And so, yeah, just my advice would just be like, don't wait on other people. Just do like, go for it. Yeah. That's, that's fantastic advice. Uh, you definitely have to, my, my stepdad used to always tell me if you wait for, wait for your turn, you're never going to get it because nobody's going to give it to you. Yeah. Yeah. Mike's shaking his head. He knows, he knows how it works. All right, Mike, (laughs) uh, us old dogs, we know how it works. All right. So, uh, people can find you on YouTube and you have a a Twitter account now, X, X, it's called X now, X account now as well. Are you on uh, DeviantArt or any place else? Uh, yeah, I'm on DeviantArt, but I like haven't, I don't think I've been like been on it in like six, seven years, but I have it. It's the same as my YouTube. And then I have like Instagram. My Instagram is E A G like number two N. And I think that's about it. And then my Patreon is Eek tab. Um, I'm, I haven't posted a ton there yet, but I plan on uploading some like behind the scenes and just stuff of how I put the videos together. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. All right, Mike, you got any uh, closing closing thoughts or questions? I'm glad to just have another animator on YouTube uh, along with Worthy Kids and Harry Partridge and everybody else. There's just not enough because uh, YouTube kind of demonetized or they don't advertise cartoons as much because it takes so long to put animation up on YouTube. Yeah. So you're not really in the algorithm, but mm-hmm. I'm glad to have another, to have another voice, another talent on there. I'm, I'm greatly appreciative of your work. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. All right. Well, I think we're going to wrap this up. Thank you again so much for coming on. It was a, a great conversation and uh, good luck to you. I think you're going to go places. I really do. Uh, please subscribe to the podcast on Spotify, YouTube, uh, Amazon Music, uh, wherever you found us. We're all over the place now and uh, we'll talk to you next time.